Uh, hello everybody, James here, Storytime with Dutch Mantel, episode 62, and we have a very special guest we'll introduce in a minute, but first we have books, we have t-shirts, we have all sort of, sorts of things that we you know we can sell to you and flog to you, there's links in the description, and I have none of them to actually show you on camera, because uh, we spent 30 minutes, Dutch and I, trying to get his video and audio sorted, and I sort of just forgot to do everything else, but for now, I'm going to just leave it out, I'm going to go now, I'm going to throw it to Dutch Mantel to introduce our guest, and... Uh, 30 years or more of uh, uh, reminiscing on the past and the future and everything else. So, Dutch, take it away. Well, I'm pleased to announce today that I'm joined by a very special guest and a guest I haven't seen in, 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 in quite a while. But my good friend, and you just saw him on the WWE pay-per-view. I think it was Backlash, I think it was, or SummerSlam. What was it? Anyway, let me introduce you first. Sabio Vega. Sabio, how are you? How you doing? How you doing, Dutch? How you doing? Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Uh, uh, you know, uh, como tu estas? How you doing? Oh, I am, I'm doing good. Hey, I'm glad you joined us on, on the show. It has been a while since I've, I've talked yes. to you. And yes. uh, l- let me just say that I, I just want to go over today some of your career when did I first meet you? We met the first time. Uh, well, we met before, but we don't know. <laughs> when I saw you working here in Puerto Rico, you and, and uh, Frankie Lane yeah. as the cow- Cowboys, you come with a, what was it, $10,000 bag of coins. That's the first time I saw Dutch Mantel here in Puerto Rico, and I saw those uh, great stories that you guys put it together. And... Uh, then we uh, we got together in Louisiana, Mid South Wrestling. I was the oh, yeah. uh, I was El Colsario. You I and re- me did a, a tight team match. <clears throat> you know, I, I saw I saw a picture of that, and you were Corsario, correct? Yes, sí, señor. Yeah, yeah. And what does El that Colsario. mean? What does that mean? A Corsario they- means like a pi- pirate from the century, whatever, you know, uh, in, uh, the, the, that's called El Colsario, kind of a pirate of the Caribbean. But yeah. I was doing, I was doing a, a gimmick, like a, a kind of a, I don't know, a terrorist guy with the flam, they call him the flam or something like that. It was the Puerto Rican crew that the did whatever in, in, in the United States. <laughs> so for those times, you know, the uh, using those words of whatever was okay. So I was coming uh, to uh, Mitzah Wrestling as a Puerto Rican uh, terrorist, I guess. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even know that. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I first met you in Mid-South. Then you went back to Puerto Rico. See. And you yeah. were working for Carlos Colon. Yeah, I went back. I went back for them, worked for them. And uh, they kept me here for, I don't know, six six months maybe. Then I went to Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to Mexico for four months. Then I come back as uh, TNT. That's when the, they put the gimmick as a TNT here in Puerto Rico. And you and, had a lot of you had a lot of success at TNT, right? Well, yeah, I, I, you know that was the uh, the beginning of a, of a, I don't know what I did. You know the story is right there. When I when I back uh, from Mexico, <clears throat> I got invader. That called me uh, and Profe and uh, Angelo Rivera to the office and says to, to us, uh, is it going to be uh, new characters with you guys? And uh, so you're going to call, you, you're going to be TNT and Profe is going to be a Profe. And uh, I'm like, what the heck? And he said, you have to cut your hair. I said, cut my hair. I got my <laughs> afro, brother. I got my afro. I can, you know, he said, and uh, he said, well, yeah. So I did. Let's, let's try. TNT was an experiment, you know, like uh, every every other uh, characters, you know. Uh, the funny about this is like, okay, cut your hair, paint your face. I said, okay, why well, would, would you want me to the paint? I said, whatever you want. I said, okay. Uh, and the way back home, I asked Profe, uh, okay, what was my name? <laughs> because I forget completely. I was like, uh, what the heck? So, uh, because they just give me that, this is the name. But the develop up of the character is not there. You know, mm-hmm. it's like whatever you do, it, it is. So, so that's what we did. And uh, the first person that paid me was uh, um, Cheeky. Cheeky paid me. Uh, this is on Monday and Wednesday. Cheeky, Cheeky we, Star. Cheeky Star, yeah. Yes. 
this is a Monday that he uh, told us about the name, and and Wednesday we already doing TV in Catania. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, let's go. Uh, so, what do you have to do? Well, you have to be a killer. You have to go there and eat the the guys alive. <laughs> so I said, okay. In my way to the ring, he come to me, put his arm around me, and he say, "This is the opportunity. If you don't pass it, you out." You know, I said, don't worry. I got it. I remember why, because already I have like a, almost what two years, almost two years with experience. I went to Louisiana, the local experience, the, the experience in Mexico. I opened a little bit the road, you know, on my head with the with the show, with the business. So I, I know what to do. So I did three matches and I did what I have to do. You know, uh, I, I come from a jobber to move myself to the to the top. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, you know, what the, the study was good. They they see I passed the the test. They send uh, two other guys to try to shoot me, you know, and to see how uh, I react. And boom, I, I just pick it up right there and do what I have to do, and everything come out good. So. From that point on, uh, TNT was every Wednesday, you know, uh, beating all the baby faces to to the top to get to Jose and get to uh, 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 Carlos. But what's interesting, man, uh, I work with all kind of guys, uh, local guys, guys from the States. Uh, what's good? Hey, History. explain explain to the fans. Yes. Uh, explain to the people listening how the fans were in Puerto Rico during that time. <laughs> fans, fans. Well, I, I was, I was the first time I, I saw the yeah the show whatever. I was, uh, I was a fan, of course, and uh, I visit the 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 buildings, the the cards, and you have people exciting people inside that the matches big time. They love their baby faces, and uh, it's a story about the the throwing things. The people like to hit the the, the wrestlers. But one of the guys that had to do a lot with that was Victor Quinones. Because Victor, what he did, he did a, a, um, a trade. Well, one we'll, we'll yeah. second. We'll, we'll talk more about Quinones in a minute. Yes. But, but, yes. but tell, me, tell me about Quinones. Quinones, ladies and gentlemen, is the guy who later on started the uh, opposite, uh, the opposition to the company that Sabio was working with now with Carlos. But we'll yes. cover him in just a, just a little bit. Yeah. So for what he did, he bought the this uh, boxes of uh, M and M's uh, and 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 start selling the the boxes of M and M's to the people. And what what they said is here. So you throw to the wrestler, you know, buy the M and M's. <laughs> so you throw things to the wrestler. So the people got a you know a good idea and they start throwing more things and they bring stuff now. They bring rocks because the M and M is expensive for them. So uh, people start <laughs> <laughs> people start people start throwing things left and right. I mean, wild. I mean, I mean, something that you go crazy. I remember one of the times we are in Hyde and Bethan. And uh, something happened with Ayala. I believe he turned heel, and all the babyface come in. We uh, clean the ring and continue with the heels all the way to the dressing room because it was in a, a ballpark and the people was outside. And I mean, and to protect the guys, we continue with them all the way to the dressing room. What happened here is somebody break one of the the, the chairs, the the steel, you know, the ballpark, and that's a steel metal, big time. And throw that to Ayala, missing Ayala for us for a beat, and and grab Miguelito Perez in the head. Wow! I mean, I mean, uh, Miguel was next to me. I saw I saw the thing hit the 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 concrete on top the dugout and hit Miguel. I mean, he opened Miguel all the way to the bone, and uh, and we jump on Miguel right there, cover him, and went back to the other dressing room. Doctor, come. Miguel have stitches inside and outside. The people was wild. Uh, people in Puerto Rico, big time uh, throwing things uh, all the way to the IWA. I remember in Pepin Sestero de Bayamón. Uh, well, yes, let me uh, ask you this: Have yeah. you ever had to? Did you ever rescue me? Uh, 
Yes, yes. In <laughs> in uh, yeah, well, I, I work uh, going a little bit back. I work as a security guard too. Uh, as a fan, I was closing to the to the ring without knowing. I was of course a fan. Then I work as a security guard. Then I was inside the ring. But by the time that I work here, you 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 know, you don't work here in Puerto Rico in that time. Uh, in uh, but in IWA, when the the things happen and people start throwing things, we defend the the, the wrestlers going yeah, back to the dressing room because people throwing. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, to a point, listen to this. I don't know. You probably don't remember. I remember that big time. One time we, we did uh, we did uh, an in ring. In in green in Pepin Sestero, and, and the people uh, the people was so hot, so mad of what I say. Now this they is a, throwing, the the yeah. outdoor baseball stadium. No, the, uh, Pepin Sestero is the close. Oh, one. inside, the, inside, the, the, the inside, okay. the inside. Pepin, Pepin, the Betances. So uh, the people got so mad, they started throwing things. I mean, bad, bad, bad. bad. I mean, uh, that was dirty, and we don't have ringside at that time. I remember when I went back to the to the dressing room, the people. I mean, they're so nasty and dirty is so I come back to the rain again. I come back to the rain again. And I grab the mic and I start telling people a little story, you know, and I said, listen, you go to Bellas Artes. Bellas Artes is a, a big theater here yeah. in Puerto Rico, you know? You go, the you fi- go to the Bellas- fine arts, the fine arts exactly. building. Exactly. Yes. And so you go to Bellas Artes and you don't throw things there. You know, this is my Bellas Artes, you know, this is my uh my uh my theater, this is whatever you want to call it. And you are a pig. And I started saying that in, in English, pig, cerdos. And I was telling oh, more things they start throwing. I mean, they're mad, mad. I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what <laughs> I say in the in ring. I got them hot. So from all that things that they throw there, my friend, in, unbelievable. Two things, only two things went to my face. I was looking to the hard camera and I remember something coming straight to me and I just went left. I turned around to talk to the other people. Something come to me. I went right. I mean, nothing hit me. They they started throwing things to me, but nothing hit me. I don't know. The guys around, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So <laughs> from that point on, from that point on, I changed the security. Not, not to take the security out. The strategy of how to work. Right now, my friend, many, many years later, uh, and we clean that. No more throw. I start, you know, every anybody to throw something out. Anybody to throw whatever out of the building. You know, you, you lose your money because you start, you, you are a pig, you know. So I tell them, I start taking people out. In my way to the dressing room, some lady throw me some uh, sandals, you know, their shoes. <laughs> Brand, I pick it up. I remember I pick it up brand new. Say Payless in the bottom. I say, this son of a gun is going to, oh, I say, see, this son of a gun is going to go back with the, uh, to, to, what do you say? Uh, to, to take back the, the, the shoes. <laughs> so I went to the dressing room. I throw the, the sandals right there, brand new. She, I believe she bought it, box, went to the uh, wrestling, bare shoes. I mean, bare, bare feet and, and taking the shoes in the hand because don't, don't even have a scratch. So what I did is one of the security to come to me and say, Savio, the lady says, uh, the send, you know, give it back to their shoes. I said, oh, she want the shoes. And I pick up my scissors and I open the shoes, the, the shower shoes in the middle. Boop. I cut it both. And I said, here, give it to her. And he's like, oh, my God, so give it to her. So she doesn't throw no more things. So brand new shoes cost her money to be a pig. So uh, uh, <clears throat> I got, I got, we, we laugh about it. He come back after that and he, oh, she's mad. He was cursing you. She was, I said, you know, whatever. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the people here in Puerto Rico, they threw, they, I mean, spot plugs, rocks, oh, uh, yeah. pampers. Glass, uh, glass, uh, beepers. They throw me with beepers. You know, remember they got the beepers. They throw me with a beeper. I mean, uh, we got the people so hot that they they went crazy, crazy. And and the people I tell some of this stuff to, they look mm-hmm. at me like, yeah, whatever. 
But no, sellouts in those big stadiums there was normal. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, you could crazy. go and you'd you'd have a uh you would have a twelve thousand or a seventeen thousand seat sellout and yeah. the people and and I always tell this story yeah. that when I worked for Carlos the first time, he would put his main event on fourth. Four. Four and all I, the time. And, and I thought that was the stupidest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah. So I brought it up to him one day. I said, I mean, I wasn't a smart ass about it because he was mm. the boss. I went, hey, why do you put the main event on fourth? He said, well, the people here like to drink. And he said, if we waited to later in the evening, put that main event on, that's the heater match. He said, you'd never get out of there. People would be so drunk, they wouldn't care. And yeah. they would actually hurt themselves trying to hurt you. Yeah. And after I saw how those people reacted to some of my stuff I did down there, I thought he was the smartest guy in the world for putting <laughs> that main event on for so he could go out and get ready and sometimes even leave early. Yeah. Sometimes you, you couldn't even do that. So no, no. You, you, you started in Puerto Rico. You started as a security guard. Yeah. And you'd always taken karate and martial arts yeah. anyway, right? <clears throat> yeah. So when, just, when, Sorry, when when I got in love with wrestling, I was what 11, 12 years old, something like that, and uh, and I started watching ti Titan of the Ring. The Titans of the Ring comes oh, yeah. from Argentina, mm -hmm. the the real characters, you know. So that's what I got. I fell in love, you know, and uh, I saw that and I'm like, whoa, you know, when like something flashed to my uh, through my eyes and got somewhere in my my head my brain and i went like oh my god every sunday at five o'clock i had to be in the front of that tv i mean whatever i was i want to call home and watch the, the, the show now that show finished i went back to the you know in school with the with the guys and we talk about the wrestling and they say oh it's wrestling channel four wrestling channel four yeah no huh. that finished that's what's channel seven no 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 it's a new wrestling this is yeah 74 75 something like that so I'm like, like, what the heck? And I put the uh, the channel, I start watching the uh, the show, and every Saturday, and every that was Saturday, that was Carlos's uh, show. That's Carlos, yeah, Capital Capital Sport Promotion. That's when I saw Dutch. I saw Dutch there, uh, Hurricane Castillo, father. I remember uh, you did, you guys did some on TV, in where. Uh, you wrestled, I mean, you got the $10,000 back in, on coins, you know. Uh, you beat everybody, everybody, every week until it was Carlos and somebody else. And uh, they almost Rivera, have you. Rivera, I host, think. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, they almost have you guys beat or beat you. So, yeah, they beat you guys, and you hit it with the coins and, and juice all over the place, and you beat the hell out of them. That's when Rakan Castillo Sr., Coming mm -hmm. to make the save, he turned babyface that yep. night, that day, and uh, he hit it with the shoes. I wasn't home screaming like a crazy, <laughs> happy, and this and that, of course, and uh, because now when you realize and see all this, was a good TV, was a good uh, you know television, good good show, and you guys went back to the uh, of course uh, um, uh, the night and sold out uh, Juan Ramon Lubriel Stadium, you know. And, you know, the, uh, I mean, the, yes, the, the story about that night, we did TV at some little bitty station, yeah. I think, or some out I of remember. the way of San Juan. And Calabria. we had like a hundred people in the studio that night. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a riot inside, inside. the, the yeah. TV studio. Yeah. yeah. And they had to call Small the police place. out. And it, 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 it was crazy. I actually, somebody threw something and hit me. And I was bleeding like a stuck pig the time the night was over, but it, wow. but but it was crazy. Uh, let me just go back here a minute. You talk about Titanes del Ring. Yeah, that was the name of that Argentinian yes. show you were watching. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I thought I was the only one who saw that show because I yeah. was going, I was surfing through in my room one day because after I got heat on me, I couldn't go out nowhere because the mm -hmm. people. I thought the people hated me because I was such a great technical wrestler. Well, yeah. They hated me because they really hated me. <laughs> and I talked about Puerto Ricans being slow and 
e- effeminate yeah. and you know the well, women gotta, being loose yeah. and you know and they ought to make English the the number one language and brother that that hit a nerve. Oh it yeah, really did. I could not go out of my uh, hotel and walk ten feet. Somebody would say some Susio Susio Dutch, Eho de puta. And see, that's how that's how I learned to cuss. Eho de puta is like son of a son, son, of, a son bitch. of a bitch. And, yeah. Yeah. In, in, in Spanish, I didn't know that. Then they'd say, you this. And I said, Eho de puta is what's that mean? Oh, no, no, no. It's a bad word. Don't say that. I, I didn't yeah. know that, but yeah. I could. And I was in, and I was in the tourist section. Condado so I, I could imagine that if I went down into the, uh, the, we're just, you know, like a shopping center where regular Puerto Ricans went, tourists didn't go. No, they, no. they would, they would have killed me. Yeah. But anyway, it was, I had never seen uh, a more passionate group of wrestling fans yeah. in my life. I say this about Puerto Rico. They thought the space program was fake. Yeah. And wrestling was real. What's real? Exactly. Oh my God. It was just, you know, it, it, it was, but I tell you, I made a, I made a lot of money there my first year. I know. I actually, I know. I actually, I actually bought, I actually bought my first house off my yeah. first year in Puerto Rico. Wow. I mean, it was and, good money. Know, and we used to do a deal. I'm not taking away from your story, but no, no, you, no. You, you remember when Carlos and uh, they opened up, another island down there called Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago, yes, yes. I remember making two days down there and three days in Puerto Rico. And I ended up making for that week, and this is 1979, yeah. I ended up making $4,700. Wow. You know what that is today? Wow. It's like 20 grand. Yeah. yeah. And I went. Easy. And I thought I was underpaid. I started to go down to the office and start bitching. Oh, what the hell? You think it's only worth that? Or this, that, and the damn other. Yeah. But yeah. but it was crazy. And it was, uh, but anyway, that's is when I first met you. Mm-hmm. So when you left Puerto Rico, you went to WWE. I mean, WWF. F. F. What year? Well, what year? I, I, was, I, was, I was working for, uh, I work in, uh, in Japan. Abi yeah. Abi Abdullah took me to Japan for uh, one of the biggest uh, tournament over there in December uh, 87 mm-hmm. I believe uh, maybe 87 yeah 87 87 and uh, uh then I come back uh, 88 in uh, early area uh, uh, yeah January of the 88 I believe it was and uh then uh, they took me out of the uh of the uh, tour you know because uh, I remember, and, and this is a, a story, uh, Abby was a great, loving friend of Carlos, you know, and they doing a lot of money, a lot of business. Uh, and Abby took me there, and using his experience, uh, he asked me about Puerto Rico. I said, what do you mean? <coughs> I remember that. And uh, he said, well, well, how is business? I said, well, we hot because they, they owe us a lot of money. It was uh, a couple of weeks behind. You know, and we we don't understand why because houses was good, and uh, Chiki was mad in one part on one side over there. Everybody was uh, kind of a hut. So Abby asked me over there, uh, "How was the uh, the business?" That, well, they owe us money. Well, he went back to Carlos, called back uh, Carlos that night, and talked to him about what happened. So when we come back uh, three weeks later from Japan, it was a long tour. Uh, I remember we are in, in Caguas and Carlos uh, come to me and say, hey, what happened in Japan? I say, well, many things. We wrestle here. We wrestle there. So he say, no, 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 no. What happened there? I'm like, what happened there? What do you mean? So, yeah, what happened? I said, well, we wrestle and we, you know, <laughs> tournament because what the heck? Yeah. So he's not, he, he know what he want to ask, but he's not asking clearly what he want to ask. So he said, what happened with, uh, with Abby? I say, Abby, he's okay that I know. He say, no, that you talk to him about uh, what happened here in Puerto Rico. <laughs> and now, yes, say, oh, yes. Well, yeah, I tell him uh, that we are hot because the money, uh, you know, we need to get our money back and, and blah, blah, blah. So he don't like that. He turned around and left, you know. So I'm like, so fuck you, you know. I mean, he, 
what do you want me to say? Um, mm -hmm. We hard, yes. We do you owe us money, yes. So without knowing, of course, because I don't know that that he was a good friend, of course, with Baba and Abdullah, of course. So they took me off the the uh, Japan completely, you know, like a punish. Oh fuck him! So he used his uh, his experience, he used his knowledge, he used his friendships uh, to to go against a young, a, a young guy that was starting the business. You know mm -hmm. how I how I know this because uh, you know later on looking and and asking and checking, I know the, all this Gaga. So I said, ah, okay, I see. So no head, no brain for the business. I mean, uh, just for the just to to make somebody uh, punished by yeah, something he, that he you did. Yeah, he was going to teach you a lesson. Like, yeah, but like okay. no made no money. He closed. He he closed the. Uh, I was making twenty five hundred a week. There, uh -huh. you know. So hey, that's a good money for for me coming from here. Uh, yeah. So you know that helped me a lot in my my business. You know. So what he did, he cut that. So he cut my my supply of leaving. You know, that's the way I see it. Yeah. So to me, that's a son of a bitch. You know. Yeah. Because you don't do that. So that's okay. He did it. Good because. What goes around comes around somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a uh, uh, couple of years later, I, I quit the company by Hugo talked to me and he said, I want to leave in the I leave the company and I want to take you with me. I'm like, I'm like, well, what the heck? You know, make me fucking nervous. So I said, okay. <laughs> so I left. I left the company and uh, we where did really, you, where, did you, where did you go? Well, I left to uh, with Hugo to another local company here in Puerto Rico. It was IWA, All Star Wrestling. So we went there and we started making some money. The, the, at least the, the lady was paying weekly, weekly, you know. So I uh, established myself. From that, uh, I started making the uh, the bridge again with Japan. Mm -hmm. So you know, to see what happened, to see what this and that. Here in Puerto Rico, I started working with some local. Yeah, uh, business. You know, I was like uh, almost two years with the other company. That gave me enough uh, uh, time to to know other people in the business. I was new, you know. Uh, make my bridge back to to Japan. Uh, this time with the uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, yeah, all New Japan Pro Wrestling, the Inoki office. Uh, I I don't come back to. Capital Sport Promotion for 23 years. In those 23 years, I went out and learned, you know, the hard way and what's the right way to learn how to do business. And of course, every day we learn more and more. I see things in Louisiana when I went there. I see things in Mexico when I went there. Here in Puerto Rico, I see life in, in Japan. I see what's more life after the wall in Puerto Rico. So so that's what I did. From Japan, that's when I got the 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 bridge with Racer Ramon Scott Hall, rest in peace. Uh that he helped me to get in WWE or WWF in that time. So from Japan, me working in Japan, get that opportunity to do a tryout, brother. I said, let's do it. You know, I didn't even know too much about WWF because I was more concentrated in Puerto Rico. I don't even speak. Uh, my English was worse now than before. But I mean, I was, uh, 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 what is it called? Trying to learn the language too. I know more English with the story of the finishes that we're doing than have a conversation, <laughs> you know? Uh, my first teacher, I, I say, in Louisiana was uh, Jake the Snake. Yep. Uh, Robert, I mean, Jake helped me a lot, a lot. He was like a teacher uh, to me. One time I remember we were in Oklahoma, was a, a A man tag, and they had me in that match. And uh, everybody's talking, and they, 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 I'm like, I'm like this. I'm like, a, okay, <laughs> whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever you guys say. I'm like, okay. And, and I remember Jake saying, don't worry, kid, I'll talk to you. I said, all right. So they finished and he sit down with me, my friend. And he, he was like a, 
he don't speak Spanish, of course, but was like a, he was talking Spanish to me. I understand every word that he say, what's going to happen, everything, everything. So we went inside the ring and everything worked <laughs> smooth. I mean, right there, step by step, finish. And uh, they all come to me and congratulate because they thought it's going to be a mess. I got Ted DiBiase there, Jim Duggan, John Dardock, uh, uh, Jake, and I forget the other one. And uh, man, I was so happy uh, because that helped me a lot. That, that gave me a, a, an, enough power to, to continue, you know, working with this uh, gentleman. And uh, he was my teacher. Every, every night that we work, I say, hey, come on. <laughs> so he, he, uh, he helped me. And uh, I told him that a long time ago. He, he became my teacher in, in Mitzah Wrestling. Yeah, Jake was, as far as that in-ring work went, Jake knew what he was talking about. He was yeah. a, he was a technician. And when I would watch Jake, I would say, there's no wasted moves. Nothing no. is wasted. No, it no. And he took his time. Oh, and, big time. And, and you could watch him and he's, he's telling the story the whole time, which yes. is he, he's, he's one of the masters. I, I will say that. Yes. Yeah. And Jake, listen was, to the, and Jake was pretty ahead. interesting to talk to, too. See, I yes. mean, uh, the, the first person that the picked me up in Louisiana was his daddy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Smith. You used to you ride a me. lot with the, the Hebner brothers, right? Oh, yeah. Me? No, no. But this is in WWF. Oh, oh, this oh is, I see. Uh, this, I see. I'm, talk, I'm, I see. Talk, I'm talking about when my yeah. first trip, my first trip to, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, listen to this story. My first time that Luke Williams, the cheaper, told me, uh, told me he said, hey, kid, you interested in gold uh, to the United States? I say yes, of course. He say uh, I might be send you to Tennessee. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, Tennessee, you know. And uh, I'm happy because I'm, you know, they're gonna send me out. So I went to my my parents and said, hey, uh, they're probably gonna send me to Tennessee. And my dad, which my dad went, no way, you're not going <laughs> over there. I'm like, no, <laughs> this is you know. <laughs> You don't speak English, and it's a lot of races there. You know, going over there. That's what he, you know, I'm like, a, uh, you know, I, I didn't even think, I didn't even thought about that. I'm, I'm like, a, no, I'm going. This is, I don't know, in the, in the 80s, what? I don't know, yeah. 80 something, whatever. So I said, I want to go. 87, 80, yeah, 87, something like that. Yeah, uh, maybe, no, no, 80, 86. Yeah, 86. Well, the, the, the point is, uh, he said, no, no, don't go there. So one week later, uh, Luke, Luke <laughs> says to me, hey, kid, uh, no more Louisiana. I mean, no, no uh, Tennessee. I say, oh, okay, but I might, you, I might be send you to Louisiana. So I say, okay, my dad mm -hmm. is going to be, my dad's going to be, uh, you know, uh, more relaxed. It's another place. So I went back <laughs> home and said, hey, it's not going to be Tennessee no more. He said, it's going to be Louisiana. Ah, oh, even worse. <laughs> uh, he said, they uh, disappear you there. You know, I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> so, you know, you, you, know, <coughs> you don't see no word. You know, it's like word. Uh, you know, how are you going to go to a place like that? He's, he's trying to he's trying to protect me, you know. So <laughs> I said to him, okay. So I said to my mom, I'm going. I'm going anyway. Well. Uh, he went to work, and I, I went to the airport. Uh, and I arrived in Baton Rouge, a small airport. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a small airport. And uh, when I arrived there, it was about the plane was delayed. When we arrived, the bags stay in, st still in, in New Orleans. I believe it was New Orleans or something like that, Atlanta. I don't even re remember. I, I believe I, I flew from Atlanta to Bar Baton Rouge. It's only a small plane. So when we arrived there, no bags. I'm like, where's my oh. bag? My, my maleta, you know? So I hear some uh, ladies speaking Spanish. And I just went, uh oh. I went straight to, there, to her. I say, ¿Qué pasó? What happened with the uh, bags? He said, oh, it's coming in the next plane, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay. So I'm waiting for the person to pick me up. Uh, it's one hour behind over there. So it was a Friday, and I remember. They have a uh, they have a show in Ponce, 
which is like, what, two hours away from uh, San Juan. So I'm in Louisiana, six o'clock in the afternoon. Nobody come to pick me up. Finally, I got my bag. I just waiting and waiting. I remember I called my mom. I said to my mom, mom, nobody come to pick me up. I'm going to buy another ticket like I'm going to buy a taxi, you know, and I'm going back home because I, mm -hmm. I, I, I got some money with me. So uh, she said, no, 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 stay there. Somebody's going to come pick you up, relax, you know, blah, blah. She, she gave me the, the comfort, you know. So I said, okay, uh, at midnight, they have to close the airport. So everybody have to go out. You know, in Baton, so in Baton Rouge, in, in Baton Rouge was a small airport. That's where they so, disappear. You remember exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's when he say, go out. I'm like, uh, OK, everybody have to go out. Was just two person there or some guy. Uh, they didn't even pick me up. He picked him up and me. So they turn all the lights off. Everything was dark by. I don't know what time they picked this guy up. I'm, I'm by myself there. In the dark pitch, I mean, pitch dark. I'm, I'm poof. I'm like, all right. So, thinking in where they gonna disappear me or somebody gonna mess with me, I say, I have to fight here with my life. If something happened, hey, I come in, I'm already black belt. I'm thinking, hey, hey, I'm gonna do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, about 2 30 in the morning, the white Impala four doors arrive. Chris Smith, one. I say, yes, come on, let's go. I say, oh, my God. So he's in the way talk, talking to me in English like I understand. <laughs> I don't understand shit. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he put me in a, a small uh, hotel. Uh, next day, knocking my door was Skander Akbar, you know, and he's he going to be my manager and I'm going to be traveling with them, blah, blah, blah. Then we moved to another place in where we stay in Baton Rouge. Uh, was an interesting uh, story for me, you know. My first night staying uh, with Skander Akbar, I sleep on the floor because uh, he have just one bed. So I said, I sleep here. Don't worry. I'm okay. So next day, we uh, I got my apartment. Uh, I was working with them uh, almost, what, every weekend now huh? that, that we we there. Uh, I remember once one of the referees, forget his name, he's... We wrestled that night, that Friday was in New Orleans, and he finished that same day that I arrived. I'm like, why? Why are you leaving? You speak Spanish. I could learn with you, and you know, so and so. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he, he's going. He was going to uh, Tennessee. Uh, he was a referee. I forget his name now. Uh, but we talk about you know we talk a lot. Uh, uh, you know, in that little moment that we are there, he explained me a lot of things. Uh, but I, I, I was there in Louisiana for four months, four months. And uh, that this is before, this is before, a little bit before, or, or was in the process already, when Vince was uh, taking all the talents from every uh, 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 territory. Because I was there with Ginger Duck, Ted DiBiase, uh, Jim Duggan, Jay the Snake. I was with all those guys. Then actually, they, boom, they, gone, uh, they went to uh, New York. Was well, a big, big, and, uh, big time. Yes. And one by one, he peeled them off. Yeah. I think Junkyard Dog was the first to go, I think. Then Duggan. Yeah. And that was the, the core of the territory. Then I think uh, Teddy or Jake went. Then the other one went. Yeah. And pretty soon, it, it was a skeleton crew of what was left. And then you can imagine business went. Oh. It went, no. it went because it was a steady diet of those guys until Vince mm -hmm. said, come here guys, and I'll make you this and I'll make you that. And he did, I guess, because they yeah. seemed to be, they was in a better spot. They were making more money. But I hear $5,000 a week. I mean, they, they making, uh, well, they, big, weren't big make, they, money. Weren't, they weren't making that in, uh, yeah, in mid South. In, in, uh, no, no. The thing about mid South and you will agree with me. The miles were brutal. Ooh. When brutal TV, miles. TV in Shreveport. Oh, <laughs> I laughed one time and I says, I saw a sign that says you are leaving Louisiana. Oh, yeah. I was happy as hell. You are <laughs> leaving Louisiana. And I said, I'm yeah. leaving that. And I am never, ever com coming back again. So, yeah. 
So how did you get to WWE, uh, WWF? Yes, I was I was uh, working with the uh, Inoki office, and uh, by that time the the crew of uh, Guy Jean or American guys was Yokozuna, Kokina, mm -hmm. was Fatu, was Sam, was Bam Bam Bigelow, Bader, and me, and mm -hmm. and and they bring some other uh, England guys sometimes. So uh, <clears throat> that was the crew. So Yokozuna, yeah, Greg Kokina, Rodney. He was uh, uh, ready to go to to WWF. The, he's he's already have his tryout, and they're gonna pick me pick him up. And re I remember that week was his last tour in Japan. And uh, Bam Bam Bigelow's going over there too. So I said to Bam Bam, I said, brother, tell uh, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, that I say hello because we wrestled here in Puerto Rico so many many times. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you know, I like the guy. We wrestle here, oof, crazy. So. Uh, I say, tell him to say hello. He went over there, did his tryout, whatever, come back to the next tour in Japan. And was the, I was in the tour too. So uh, he said, T, here is the number of uh, Scott Hall. Uh, call him. He's going to be home uh, this Monday. I said, all right. So uh, I finished Japan, went home. And that week, boom, I called uh, Scott. And uh, he said, hey, man, we start, you know, talking. He said, I, I got you uh, a tryout. I talked to the old man, was Vince, and uh, he's going to give me a tryout. I'm like, hey, man, I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know too much about WWF. I even have cable uh, in home. So <clears throat> I said, yes, of course. Why not? So I say, he said, it's going to be this day. And I look in the calendar. Well, I said, beautiful, because I, I will finish uh, – Japan on, on was a Saturday or something like that. So I go home. Uh, I'm going to tell them to flow me to uh, uh, Syracuse, New York, and you guys fly me from Syracuse home. He said, okay, I, I talked I talk to them, blah, blah, blah. We did all whatever. I did my first match as a TNT, painted face, my gimmick. So I come back from the ring, and here's Scott waiting for me in the back. And he gave me a chop big time. Boom. I said, and he said, what the hell is that? I said, what do you mean? He said, I mean, I bring you here. I talk to these people that you are uh, good and you this and you're aggressive and blah, 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 blah. And you did that shit match, you know? I'm like, well, I just want to, you know, I don't want to do, no, 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 no. I want, I want to, I want to see the guy that was beating my ass in Puerto Rico. You know, he said, you have another tryout tomorrow. Uh, bring that guy out. I said, oh, you got it. So next day I, I bring TNT, you know, out. So I did my vicious thing and attacking and blah, blah, blah. So he said, now good. They sent me home. I was on, I, I finished Japan uh, because they tell me, hey, we're going to pick you up. I said, all right, good. So I wasn't home for almost, what, three months without call, without nothing. Till one day I said, hey, I called the office. What's going on with me? If you're going to give me the job, give him the job. If not, you know, I'm going back. I'm starving here. You know, I wasn't working for, with nobody. <laughs> so uh, uh, I call him another time again. And uh, I remember Anne Russo, uh, Talent Relations. Uh, she said, somebody from the, from the company is going to talk to you. And was Pat. Pat picked up the, the phone. I mean, I don't know him, of course. Pat, Pat uh, Patterson. Pat, Pat, Pat Patterson, yes. I don't know him. So he said, hey, kiddo, and he told me, ah, we're working with some uh, pay-per-view here, blah, 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 uh, we, We're going to call you. I said, okay, but please, I'm, you know, I need to make some money. And uh, good. I don't know how long, uh, you know, exactly. Uh, they called me because Ludwig Borga, rest in peace, he uh, broke his ankle. So uh, they come in with uh, some uh, Roy, Roy Rumble. And uh, they say, well, we're going to use you uh, here because you're going to take his place. So I went there. That's when Quang born in that Royal Rumble. That's when uh, they tell, uh, you know, they tell Mike, uh, we're not going to use the paint. We're going to put you a mask and uh, do you bullshit martial arts, whatever, you know. So I was, all right. So Quang was a TNT under a mask with more experience, of course. And uh so I remember when they make me a mask, I say, listen, I need a mask in where you cannot see my eyes because I don't have nothing oriental on me. 
So Quang is a chi Chinese or Japanese or whatever name, Oriental name, let's put it that way. So uh, how the hell are I going to come with that uh, Puerto Rican face uh, being Quang? So uh, they make me a mask. I still have the mask somewhere, the prototype mask. Uh, and I have mm -hmm. a photo with that. So I, I come with the design with the Quan mask and I went to Mexico. So I went to Mexico to make me a, a customs or whatever. I arrived on Monday. I called my home. When I called my home that night, uh, the, uh, my ex-wife says to me, uh, call the company because uh, uh, they need to talk to you. So I said, all right. I called WWF on <laughs> Tuesday. On Tuesday, and Ann Russo said, Quan, I said, yes, we need you here on uh, Thursday. You have to be in Dallas, I believe it was. I'm like, uh, uh, okay. But I said, listen, I'm, I just arrived last night here in Mexico, and I need to, uh, you know, to get some uh, customs. And, and she said, uh, well, uh, we don't care. You need to be in Dallas, I believe, on Thursday. Uh, I'm like, uh, okay, well, you, I have to do you that. You were in Mexico? In Mexico. Just arrived last night. So uh, when I talked to her in the morning on Tuesday, she said that to me. I'm like, oh, okay. So I have I, I, we call the people that make me the, the custom of whatever. I say, uh, you need to hurry up because I need to go. This is to take time. And I'm leaving back home Friday, you know, to take my time in Mexico. So, hey, no. The guy worked overnight. He gave me some boots. He gave me some stuff. Give me mask or whatever. I flew. On Wednesday, I arrive home Wednesday and Wednesday night. No, Thursday morning, I'm going to to, to tennis to uh, Dallas. Dallas to Dallas. So they sent me there. I was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days doing nothing there. I'm like, I could be in Mexico making me my my stuff easy. So I left half of my stuff over there, went back over there and uh, to to Dallas, three days in a hotel doing nothing, and. Uh, so I got at least mass something new to 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 bring down uh, for the character. So I did what I did. I just come inside, do uh, something with was diesel, I believe was the uh, the guy there. I was in that ring for thirty seconds, maybe less, you know. And uh, they they give me my first check. And I'm like, wow, good. I was star starving here. So uh, from that point on, they put me in the roster. Because I took Bur Ludwig Borga a spot, and uh, was great because that's I mean, life I believe that's what I call him, life. Uh, that's when I met Yoko. I mean, I was with Yoko that I know him. Fatu was doing the Sultan, and uh, I, I, that's when I met uh, Undertaker, uh, Papa Chango, all these guys, and 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 the rest of the crew. And uh, they put me in Team A. I was in Team A because I, I believe my work or whatever was was okay so uh i continue to work in with them till uh they give me the uh you know going to the story of uh, uh steve austin and me we did a tryout with he did he did a tryout with me in mm -hmm. uh, san antonio texas and uh this is a good interesting story man uh Pat, i was I, year, I just what, I, what year this was right before austin started right I mean that that's when he when he he started with me. He did the tryout with me. That was I don't know, uh 90, 95. I believe it was 95. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I was I was doing the T and uh, Savio Vega already. I was doing Savio Vega. So here Pat comes and says, uh Savio, here's Steve, he's gonna do his tryout with you. Uh let me know. So all right. So we we uh I tell him my man, uh my finish is the spinning kick. And uh, let's call it in the ring. You say, okay. And we call it in the ring. Coming out with the great, great match between him and me. So perfect. The, I was waiting for him in the back. The people, we, I mean, the, I don't know. I, I don't know if they know him. But yes, they know him because he wrestled in that area so many yeah. times. That I don't know. Uh, of course, I don't know that that story till late, years later. Here come Pat Patterson yelling, Savio, Savio. How was it? I said, do you see it? He said, yes. I said, you tell him. He said, it was great. I said, I know it was great. He said, tomorrow you guys do it again. So now on Tuesday, we have more time to talk. 
and we put something together, masterpiece. From that point on, they hire him, and we start working every night. What happened here? Years later, looking and seeing videos and asking and blah, blah, blah. Steve and me come from almost the, the same school without being mm -hmm. together, never. He was working in Louisiana, Atlanta, Tennessee, whatever. I mean, he was working in that area. And half of those guys, let's call it that way, come to work in Puerto Rico. So I was training with those same guys that was working with him there with the timing and whatever. And we, uh, I, I said that we learned from the same book. So when we got together, boom, the timing was right there. Everything, everything was right there. And, uh, and we just put together a couple of things here, there, whatever. And we have masterpieces matches, man. And uh, he 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 said he said he said uh, that I put him in shape because I was already <laughs> one year I was one year already as a quan, you know, jumping and and having time in that ring. And I always say and I have to say it, I always thank you, Mr. Fuji, Harry Fujiwara, because when I was doing doing the quan, he he always got up, had grabbed his uh, chair, put ice in his knees, and start watching my matches every time I come out. He's, hey, come on, and teach me. So every night, for four nights a week, he was coaching me, looking at my matches. And every time I come from the ring straight to him, boom, sit down next to him to listen. And he talked to me, boom, boom. Till one day he say, you got it, <laughs> you know. And I say, don't worry, thank you. And uh, I had the opportunity to, to do a tag team with Yoko many times, and he was the manager right there. And uh, he was, uh, you know, coaching me, coaching me uh, how to work in, in New York. I mean, because I was like too fast in one point to say, hey, relax, take your time, do this, do that, da, 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 whatever. So, uh, <clears throat> I mean, what's, what's a good, so Steve and me, we have a, key, a great chemistry together. You know who uh, else, you know, you know who else you had their first match there too? Yeah. The tryout match was uh, John Layfield. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I yeah, him. I, yes. And, and I yes, tell the story yes. that I went out to the ring with him <clears> because <throat> I remember at that time that my guys had left me, Ron and Don, yeah, Eli and Jacob Blue yeah. had left yeah. me, and I yeah. didn't have anybody. And he showed up from Germany for a tryout, and I'm sitting well, in there talking to him, and I said, hey, what do you think about me going to the ring with you tonight? He said, hey, fine with me. He didn't care anyway. And then yeah. Bruce Pritchard walked in or somebody, and I said, hey, what about me going to the ring with me? He said, sounds good to me, pal. So I went, and I remember I was outside watching you and, uh, and lay for that. Wow. And y'all had, had a hell of a match. Yes. And I remember when he came out, he says, what do you think? I said, well, help, that don't get you a job, nothing will. Yeah, yeah. It and was good back, and they gave him a contract that night. I forgot where we were, somewhere in New York. I uh, think it was in Syracuse, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> those, so those many towns, places there. Crazy, yeah, those yeah. towns all run together anyway. Yeah. So after, after, how long was you in WWF? I was there with them five years. Yeah, 94. Yeah, six years I was uh, there with them because I hurt my neck. Uh, by what, 1998, something like that. So mm -hmm. they took me off the roster and I was doing uh, the Spanish show, Super Astros. I was doing that part. And uh, when uh, Univision don't pick up the show, they took everybody out. Get the hell out of here. Because it was a waste of money, of course. I mean, in a moment, you don't understand why, you know, you had to be out, but what's about the business, you know? Uh, I was I wasn't in the uh, main roster already. I was out by my injury, and uh, but already Victor and me we are talking about IWA Puerto Rico. You know, we we talking okay. about uh, all but that all the time. Go ahead. Let me let me lay some groundwork here. Yeah. Now after WWF, you returned back to Puerto Rico to because of you. And re remember, fans, folks, we talked about this guy named Victor Quinones. Before and I said we would get to him later. Now we've gotten to him, and Victor, he grew up 
this Victor guy grew up in a wrestling environment, more or less. Yes. Because didn't his mother used to run like a hotel or a restaurant and yeah, some wrestlers the, came in there and that's, that's how where you, a, that's how that's he got where you guys, with the wrestlers. Yeah. That's in where you guys stayed at Tanama hotel. Oh my God. I remember Tanama. The Tanama <laughs> hotel. I, I didn't know this, but it's, it's clientele was uh, late night hookers, drug dealers and wrestlers. Yeah. That's who stayed there. I didn't know that. Uh, I'd be, I was there like six months. And I looked around. And I said, "That I means a lot of damn prostitutes here. in here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of drug dealing going on here." But <laughs> yeah, that time in my hotel. But she yeah, ran, yeah, she ran the restaurant there, right? And that's how yes. you met him. Yeah. No, I met I met Victor already when I was in in Capital in you yeah. know WWC uh, company, and uh, man. Uh, Crazy, crazy. Uh, so, so when I when I met Victor, he was already executive for the company. He was looking for uh, uh, he 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 invest he invest money in the company uh, with Carlos and Jubica. Uh What happened here? Uh, I left. I left the company. I went to uh, uh, WWF, like I said before. I didn't. I didn't even. Victor and me, we don't see eye to eye because when I left the company in a, in a, a cap, capital of Carlos Colon's company, I was I was uh, confident, you know, trusting uh, Quinones about that I leave in the company, and he was calling Carlos and tell him this, you know, that I leave it. Uh, I'm like, what the heck? This is I, I found out this many many time later, and uh, so. I went. I remember one time. I, I was to was a tour that I'm going for uh, with v Victor to Korea in Japan. So after I left the company, he said I can use you no more. I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Yeah, uh, you off the tour." I said, "Why?" Because you left the company. I said, "Well, I told you I leave in the company." So yeah, but uh, they owe me some money. If if I let you know, if I take you with me, then they're gonna pay me. I said, "Well, what the hell I have to do with my you know your business and my business?" That's two different stuff. I mean, you you know you borrow money t for them. <laughs> so what the hell I have to do with this? So he said, "Well, I can use you." Blah blah blah. So we cut right there. I, in that moment, I want to throw him. He was living in the sixth floor. I want to throw him over the balcony. So I said, "Fuck him." So I left. I left the company. Uh, uh, when I went to, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe a year later, uh, I got my bridge back to uh, Japan. Yeah. From Japan to WWF, he uh, uh, he was uh, what I said. He was the uh, Gorilla Monsoon was his godfather. Yes, he worked. He worked, of course, with WWF in that time. He was a referee over there too. He he uh, helped to set the ring. He was there. He was in the business. You know, Victor was a smart sort of a guy. Yeah, he was. Oh, so uh, and. Uh, so he he got the 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 wall to to lean down with with uh, Gorilla Monsoon. That's why you see so many uh, wrestlers coming to Puerto Rico from WWF in that time. You know, after Carlos uh, closed the bridge, uh, you remember the the incident of the gun, huh? When Carlos put the the gun on on one of the, uh, you don't remember that. Uh, I don't I, remember that. You don't before, know, we, well. before we go farther, let's take let's go back to WWF. Yeah, you remember uh, Hell Night on the plane to Europe, the flight from oh. Hell they call it. Oh my God! I was on yeah. that flight, and I remember. This is what I remember, folks. <laughs> we started out, and I we were in first class. And I got me a seat right back in the corner where nobody was behind me. Nobody was beside me. And Bradshaw was going to sit next to me. He said, why do you want to sit here? I said, I don't want, I, I just had a feeling. I said, I don't want anybody behind me. So I, I remember halfway through the flight, I wake up and there's food all over the first class cabin. There's oh, somebody man. threw a knife that was sticking into the wall. You threw the knife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then somebody shaved <laughs> one of your eyebrows. 
<laughs> oh, don't, don't, that was another play. That that wasn't no the, the painting. No, that's uh. But did you cut Scott Hall's hair that night? No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, no, the, no, that night. The, this Not is that another night. flight. That that was another flight. <laughs> but anyway, when we got to London, they told us we were going to Munich. I think in Germany, we were going to change planes, planes yeah. in Heathrow. They kicked us all off. Said you can go no further uh, yeah. on this on this flight, gentlemen, or on this airline. And we had to call the office in New York. And I think it was one of the uh, Hebner brothers <clears throat> saying, well, the guys acted like they were like in the eighth grade. And, <laughs> and we finally got a flight to, to Munich. But I think that was, was that the one they referred to as the, the flight from hell? <laughs> they, 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 I mean, that, that was nasty. I oh, remember man. what they, they, you know, they, when they serve the, uh, the food, the silver was the steel. I remember I have the knife and I just went, oh, and that stuck in the, in the glove, uh, the, the yes. back compartment on top. Bang. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, crazy. It was crazy. Crazy. It, crazy. it was crazy. Now I was thinking, mm, maybe there was a reason I sat way in the back because Something. You know, I, I had, <laughs> see, I hooked up with WWE a lot later than you did. Yeah. So, and I knew the run was only going to last because I was older then. I knew the the run wasn't going to last a long time, yeah. but it lasted. It lasted two years. But anyway, I said, "Hell, I don't want to be out of here before I need to be out of here uh -huh. because I I can get fired because of being on this flight. They could fire all of us, I guess. Oh, I mean, well, they weren't going to fire Hall and they weren't going to fire Hall and Nash and yeah. Heartbreak Kid and all this kind of stuff." Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you one more thing that I've been meaning yes. to ask you for years. Uh, you remember Madison Square Garden when Ron and Don Harris, the brothers, Eli and Jacob Blue, they confronted uh, Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, in the dressing room. Oh, Were you there that night? I was there, but I wasn't in the dressing room. But I, you I remember, remember, I you remember, I remember right? the, uh, the story. Yeah. Something happened there. And what was that about? I don't know. To be honest, to be, I, I just, I managed those I, guys. I, yeah. And they never said anything about it before that night. And they never yeah. said anything about it doing that, that night. No, no. never said was nothing. Quiet. But what they did, they, they closed off a locker room because they were mad at Sean because apparently he was bad mouthing them to Vince. The guy. And Ooh. somebody told Ron and Don about it. You know, those are two big boys. They're six eight. Yeah. And they they I think Undertaker guarded one door. And I think one of the other members of the clique are uh, the out, out of the click, the, yeah. they guarded the other door and they jacked him up on the side of those locker lockers <laughs> and said, if they ever heard him, their, their names come out of his mouth again, they were going to F him up. Yeah. And I don't think he ever talked about him again, Yeah. but right after that, I do remember, I think Ron and Don, they were, they were pissed off about their pay anyway. And I think, uh, Ron left first. So here I'm sitting there. I had two guys. And then after that night, Ron just quit. He didn't, I don't, I don't know if he told him anything or not. He just quit. And then there's me and Donnie sitting there rolling our thumbs like, Oh, well, what are we going to do? Day. And then Donnie quit the next week. So now I'm sitting there with nobody. And for yeah. a, then for a stroke of luck, then Bradshaw comes in on that Show Monday up. night with you. And I asked, Hey, can I manage him? And it all somehow worked out magically. Big time. And I was back working and, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money, but I was making, I was, you know, making more, a more, a, more, hell, more hell than a, being home. Oh, I am making a hell of a lot more than sitting at home doing nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And I remember the night, like I said, John came out of the ring and he says, 
uh, how do you think I, I did? And I says, well, if that don't get you a job, yeah, nothing yeah. will. And, and thanks to you, you made him look good. Yeah. So let's, let's get to another point that I haven't talked a lot about mm. is Bruiser Brody. Yeah. How long had Brody been coming into Puerto Rico before that happened with Invader? I remember I was the first time I see Brody here in Puerto Rico was on one of the shows, uh, uh, one of the big stadium. And I was doing the security, I still doing security. So that mean that was 80. 80 he was, well, he was killed in 88. 88. Yeah. This is, uh, don't took me too long. Uh, how long exactly, to be honest. But he was, that was 88. This, I believe, what was year, 85. What, did, what, what year did you start? 85. I mean, it, it been since 80, 80, yeah, late 85, 86. Yes. But you because, saw him, uh, you saw him before in Puerto Rico when you were doing oh, security. Oh, I, I was, I was doing security. Yeah. I remember he was in Pepin Cestero de Bayamón and uh, he come uh, with his gimmick. Was nobody in that building. It was TV, it was television. Yeah. But the building was too big, you know, it was empty, empty place, to be honest. And uh, he come out with uh, his gimmick and uh, he jumped on the table. I was next to him. I was everywhere he run. I was next to him guarding, you know, just in case. Uh, then what? I don't know how many months later I was in, inside the ring doing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I don't think it was too many months, but uh, yeah, I was right there then. I, I, you know, when I look to the side, he's next to me changing the clothes too. So I'm like, what mm -hmm. the heck is that? You know, this is a part of my story. But yes, uh, Frank come to Puerto Rico and like always, uh, I love his gimmick. I, you know, like uh, I got top five. And, and of course, Frank, not because he's he passed. Uh, he's uh, he, he's I, I pick him up like uh, one of my favorite. No, he. He was soon he arrived in Puerto Rico. I like the gimmick. I like the way the the big kicks that he throw because I went I was doing uh, martial arts and uh, and I like it. And uh, but yes, Frank was big. You know, was he he left his touch on me? I remember mm -hmm. uh, Dutch. I remember one time uh, the the you know the office called me uh, to pick up the guys. Hey, can you pick up Abdullah? I was a heel. Uh, in in hotel and, and this day they said can you pick up uh, Brody? I said yes, you know. So I went from I was living in Vega Baja. This is about forty five minutes from the airport. So uh, and they stay in that area. So I pick I went to uh, uh, pick up Frank and went we went to uh, Ponce. So in my broken English uh, here there we talking la 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 whatever. And then way back, you know, uh, we talking, and he said T. Listen to me. You say, you have good talent. If you have the opportunity to go to the States, go. And I'm like, a, you know, I'm in shock. Mm -hmm. Digesting digesting what he just said to me. I'm like, a, uh, okay. Uh, he said, go. You got good talent. Don't stay here. You know, go out. So I'm like, a, all right. You know, and uh, I already visited Japan. So when this that he told me, I'm like, okay, let's open my 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 brain a little bit more. And this shit happened. And uh I was thinking, well, he he could be the man to help me. He saw something in me, you know, with his uh knowledge, he could help me, you know, go out. And boom, 88. The man is gone. You, you still know? remember that night, correct? Fuck, like what's fucking yesterday, man. No kidding. Shit. So I mean, how, how, I, I have, how I have it, it, it's impossible to forget something that shock you and you still shock of what happened, especially when, when the person, the, 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 the person of the persons, the incident happened is close to you or friends to you and all of a sudden this shit happened it's like what the heck you know and uh of course still shock me man yeah see i tell the story that 
on that night I rode to was it in it was in Bayamon Stadium yeah. in Bayamon. Yeah, Louis I Stadium, rode yeah. I rode from I was staying in the same hotel as, as Brody. So we rode together with Tony Atlas, I think. We all rode yeah. together to the matches and some and guy the young took bloods. us. The young bloods was there too. No, the young bloods were there. Miguel Perez was there. Yeah. But I remember well, when, 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 I, when, when, I, when, 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 sorry, when the incident happened, when the incident happened was, of course, Frank, uh, from, from the States was Frank, was you, was, uh, the young bloods in better two was there too. And me, Carlos and, and Javica and Jose. Atlas. Atlas were there. That's, that's the only people there yeah. when this shit happened. When I walked into that dressing room that night, I had something like just, I had a warning system. Something is not right because I felt tension in the air. Yeah. Something wasn't right. I, I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. And I went and sat down on a, on a bench in the back with Brody. And it was just like, I'm going like, damn, what is this? Telling it back now, they're saying, oh, that's, uh, no, but it, something wasn't yeah. right. I, 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 I got, I, I, let, let me interrupt you for a second right away. I know what you're talking about because I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But when Jose called Brody and they went to the showers, I went to the uh, bathroom area, the sinks in this area, the showers was on the other side. And when I hear the first who, who, I was thinking, I don't know why, don't, don't, I mean, I don't know how to explain. Uh, I was thinking that Brody was beating Jose mm -hmm. for some reason. Why you have to think of that, you know? And that's when I hear everybody running, boom, I run to the other side, but uh, go ahead. Well, anyway, I felt yeah. such a, such a, a, a tension in the air. I said, I got to get out of here. So I got up and walked. And it's a small locker room. I walked to the door down the the little to the dugout, dugout dugout, but I walked through a little tunnel and I sat out there for maybe not long, less than five minutes. And I went back through that little tunnel, going back to the dressing room, and I still had that tension all over me. And I heard I heard now um, all this commotion coming from the dressing room. Oh, I said, what the hell was going on in there? So I got there and there was guys, you know, trying to go out that little door and up some steps. And they, somebody said, uh, Jose got stabbed. I mean, uh, Jose stabbed Brody. Brody. I said, Jose, who Jose, Jose. Cause everybody in Puerto Rico, it's like John, everybody's yeah. kind of named Jose. I said, what are you talking yeah. about? They said, invader stabbed Brody. Listen, when you hear that, it doesn't register. Oh. Wait a minute. No, nah, that, and I go in and there's Brody stretched out on the dressing room floor. And he had a cut from here. And he, I think I've explained it here before, but, and it looked serious. So, well, the, the, the cut, the cut was in the stomach. I and remember he had one I was, up here uh, in his chest too. Uh, well, but the, the one that, the, that I see was in here in the stomach and, uh, I remember Dr. Gonzalez telling him to lay down because when, when he coming out of the shower, I coming out with him. So when I coming out, he just he's grabbing his, his stomach over, he, over here and he was going to the same tunnel that you're coming out. He, he was walking through the, uh, he was, I mean, as a human, he's looking for be free of that. Yeah. He's so, trying to get out of the dressing room. Yeah, yeah. So, so he, when he get out of the shower, he walk straight to the dugout, uh, and I say to him, "No, no, that way. That's the ring area." So he turn around. That's when Doctor Gonzalez said, "Come on, lay down, lay down, lay down." So, put him right there in the in the in the dressing room. So I run out with uh, Chris Jumblot, rest in peace, and. I always I come with the mask on because I was painting my face and I have the this trunk on uh, and I run out of the dressing room like a crazy 
uh, to knock in the, the, the door of the office. And I almost took that door down, uh, nobody there. So I started running to the front of the building, the stadium. And here come the, uh, the manager of the building. And I say, need to call the ambulance now. Uh, we, we have somebody to stop somebody here, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, uh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I say, call oh, them. I was hot. Call yeah. the motherfucker ambulance. You know, so the guy went to the office and call, you know, start calling the ambulance. What happened here by that time, 88, 85, eight, you know, still we have now, but we don't have the 911 here. Wasn't no one. Oh, you, oh you did. You didn't have it there then. No, by that no? time, no, no, no. I didn't know that. No, 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 no. Nine one one. Nothing of that. You have to call seven eight. Uh, what was yeah seven eight seven, blah whatever. So uh, next door is a Robert Ruben Rodriguez Coliseum, and mm -hmm. was Menudo. Menudo was there. One of the uh, uh, singer uh, group rock and rock and that rock, yeah in Spanish and and that was sold out. You know, that that was sold out. And uh, and they have ambulance and they have whatever there, whatever. So what happened here is uh, the ambulance took, uh, I say, like 45 minutes, maybe more. I don't know the time. Of, yeah, you a know. long time. Yeah, it took a lot, a lot. So what happened here is uh, after I talked to the man, he started calling the ambulance. I went back to the dressing room. When I'm there, uh Brody's laying down. Doctor Gonzalez is talking to him, and and I remember he he pulled his shirt up, and Doctor Gonzalez look. That's when Doctor Gonzalez noticed some bubbles coming bubbles. out. That's when he said, "Well, that's bad because they probably grabbed their stomach." So we waiting for the damn ambulance, and and that's when Brody called Carlos, you know, to the side. I was next to Carlos. Of course, my English wasn't that great, but I remember. Brody talking to Carlos and tell him that tell my wife that that uh, everything's gonna be okay. Uh, tell my kids that I love him. I mean, the, that I love her. I remember those words, and uh, I was there shock. And I remember too Jose coming out of the uh, uh, bathroom, the shower, coming out of the shower, and I stand up because. My thought was, if I mean it's a it's a fight, and you go to the fight to the end. So if he gonna jump on him, he laying down here. I gonna jump on Jose. That's what I thought, to be honest. And he just come out, go all the way around, pick his car keys, and walk this way and left, left the building. And uh, so we stay there with brother till uh, uh, the ambulance arrive, and. That ambulance was empty. I mean, what's the shits? Don't have what is needed. I mean, now you have everything there. But by that time, nobody cares. You know, you, you got cut, go to the hospital. If you cannot make it, that's your problem. What's the, that, that was like the wild, wild west. Kind mm -hmm. of. And I know, and the story is why Puerto Rico was like that you know for so many years and, and you know that's another story but there he come out the, the ambulance arrived and we help uh, uh you know the guys to to put brody in the ambulance they, they couldn't so the, the, the little paramedics or the they, the, I mean, they, they, they uh, weren't strong heavy. enough to pick him up yeah no so uh, of course like tony says tony was there i was there the other guys everybody helped I mean, by the by the time the the guys was arriving, more more wrestlers was arriving to the dressing room. So uh, finally, we help uh, Frank put it in, in in the ambulance. He was so big, you know, so long. He have to put his uh, feet up and uh, close, and they took him out. So Tony went with him. So we all in the dressing room down, you know, because. I mean, everybody's like, what the hell happened here? You know, I didn't even, I didn't even paint my face. I mean, I always arrive early, you know, so the, uh, the show is at 8.30. I arrive at 5 o'clock in the building. I was early, you know, taking my time, relax, you know, 
take taking my time to paint. So that when that happened, I would sit down there with I don't want to do nothing. So Carlos said, Well, the show's gonna happen, da 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 da. So I start painting. All of a sudden here arrived Jose. He's back in the in the building. But he you know, came back after the after the show had began, right? Yeah, because he's the one who had all the finishes and everything. He was yeah. running the he was running the show. So so yeah, he 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 left the uh he left the building and uh, I don't know, 2 hours later maybe, he come back. Mm -hmm. Like nothing happened. Of course, maybe in his head he's all over the place. I don't know. I, I, I'm not in his head, but uh he come back and and, and give everybody uh what we're going to do and the show just let's go. It's like nothing happened here. Yeah. Uh, the police arrived. Uh, Tony talked to the police, and I was I was there with uh, with the uh, what is it called? Jose sit next to me in that moment to give me what I'm gonna do, and I just looking at him like, I mean, damn. And uh, I remember uh, Tony was talking to the police with the great of I don't know who the damn guy of the policeman don't speak English him mm -hmm. and the other one they both don't speak or maybe they speak the language and they, will not, they don't want to say it I don't know I'm not sure but what I hear is they don't speak English damn so I remember uh, Tony Asla saying to the police he did it he did it he stopped yeah. him Brody he stopped Brody and I remember Jose next to me he said What's going on with him? He won him. This that happened the same to him. That's when he said. And I remember I just went to the side. He was sitting next to me. And I just started looking at him like, what the heck? You know, what's going on here, man? And uh, Jovica left a little bit after. Jovica was never in the dressing room. You never see Jovica in the dressing room. But when, I came, day, I came, yeah. when I came in, I saw him. Yeah, and Carlos. Carlos and they were all together and said, in that there. Yeah, but before than that, in other other uh, arenas or something, do you see Jovica in the dressing room? I'd see him sometimes. It. He he uh, would come in sometimes, but not much. I never see Jovica in the dressing room. He come, take a leak, and go out. He never stayed. Uh, okay, so that what? Day, that day he was there. What do you th what do you think happened that night? See, I've thought about this for 35 years. And I've finally come up that I think that night, and I don't know if Carlos was in on it. I don't think Carlos is in on it or even Jovica. But I kind of believe now that Invader intended to do what he did that night. Well, yeah. You know what he was doing? He hid the, the, the knife in, in the dugout in the tunnel. And what are you saying? That knife was there. So, mm -hmm. he, yeah, he have in mind do what he did. Because if you're going to have a fight with somebody, you start a fight because of discussion or whatever. Do you know, hide a, a, a knife because you have in your head what the plan you have in your, in your mind or your heart. So he See, hide the he ha, he have the he have in mind do what he have to you know and, and what I just when I hear is because uh, the the clothing the the brother was uh, having he, he, they tell him don't don't come with the short pants because they want the rest of the look you know uh, dressing nice and and Jose told him that don't come with shorts mm -hmm. and Brody a few times come with the long pants you know. Then later, Brody arrived that day, I remember, in shorts. Mm -hmm. And that's when he got hot. But he have already in head what he going to do. He have in yeah. head. Because you don't plant the fucking knife there because you want to plant a knife. Please. Bullshit. Uh, so, so did, uh, you, did, yeah. you go to, uh, did you go to that trial? Yeah, of course. I remember the same night. Uh, I went to the... Uh, prosecutor's office and the police to talk to them uh, about the incident they have you know you have to declarate i, I finished there about three o'clock in the morning this was and the next day though 
when we well, get our, well next day though but this the same night after the, the show i went straight to the police they told yeah. me everybody oh, i don't know if you went there but uh you know i, I have went to the next there. day yeah so i went i went the, the same night they took me there you know so talk to talk to the people i did my declaration and uh i went home next day we have a show in mayagüez so I have phone at home, no no text, no nothing by that time. So I went straight. I didn't even call nobody. I just went straight to Mayagüez. I arrived Mayagüez, put my bag in the dressing room, went straight to uh, to the front in where it was Isaac Rosario, and I went to ask him if he know anything. That's when he said, uh, he, yeah, Brody died. Hmm. And I stayed there like, oh, I said, what? Yeah, he he passed away. I'm like, holy God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I was still, you know. So I went back to the dressing room. I was there by myself. Nobody there. No baby nobody faces. Sh- nobody. The the All the American guys stay in, in San Juan. I don't know nothing till uh, here come Carlos arrive, Jose arrive, and Jose's uh, and Carlos brothers, Orlando arrive. And uh, here they come. I'm, I'm, I'm there, like, you know, in shock. And I went to Carlos, you know, and I said, Carlos, do you know the Brody die? He said, Yeah, yeah, we know. Jose was there, like nothing happened, you know. And, and I said to him too, Do you know that he he passed? He said, Yeah, if he do, he born again, I do it again. That's what he said. Yeah, I remember. I just I sit down back in that seat there and stay there put. I was like digesting and ha- I don't know how to digest something like that. And I'm like, fuck. That's when they say, well, the show is canceled because nobody comes, you know, from the States, from the, from San Juan. I get up, grab my bag and fucking left out. And even say nothing to nobody else. I just went straight to my car and left. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't have a knowledge of my way back, to be honest. I never I tried to think. But, I, you know, I was in shock. I just drive, 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 drive to uh, home. Now, trial coming up. So they sent me a letter. You have to come out this day, blah, blah, blah. I went there many times and many times they sent me go back home, come back to mo- come back tomorrow, come back next, you know, whatever day. Finally, they have me to talk. I um, sit down there and. Uh, These are the detectives. I, pardon me? Pardon me you were me going again. for what? To give a deposition? To the trial. No, no. This is a the trial already. Uh, this, okay. is, this is court. This is in court. Uh-huh. So. Finally, the day of, uh, yeah, yeah. So finally, they have me uh, sit down there and uh, ask, you know, your name, blah, blah, blah. Uh, And here come the prosecutor asking me. He say, well, you there that day? Yes. What clothes uh, uh, the accused, you know, the the Jose have? Uh, Oh, he have shirt like this and pants like that. I describe him. Okay. And uh, he say, well, what happened? So I tell him what I saw. He's coming this way and coming this way, have a towel. He said, okay, about that towel. When you guys go to the shower, where where are you wearing the towel? And he's doing this to me, you know? So we, that told me that I have to tell him, oh, in the neck. But Jose have it in the arm. Yes. You know, so uh, what I, my answer was. He had it on the arm covering up the blade. Exactly. Okay. So uh, what my, my my answer to the prosecutor was so easy. And I believe he's the, the best one. I said, well, anybody carry his tower in any way, anywhere you want to carry. You know, he's telling me in the neck. If you go to the shower, you put the shower, you, the, the towel in your neck. You, you I mean, you, you want to have it up your ass, you have it up your ass. You know, you don't carry that towel, whatever, you know. So. And he's like, okay, no more question. Boom, he quit He quit with me. This is the prosecutor from the state. All right, the lawyer come out. And uh, what the lawyer says? Simple. 
I have no more question. Mm -hmm. I'm like that. All right. So the judge said, well, Juan, if you want to stay, you could stay. If you want to go home, you, you go home. So the prosecutor asked you two questions, three questions. Two questions. Get the hell out of here. I see. And uh, so when the judge said that, I said, I, I'm, I go home. I remember Dutch and people that are listening and watching. I remember one of the night, one of the dates they canceled the tryout because I don't know what the heck, some bullshit. I went home and I remember it was noon. It was noon. Here Puerto Rico Puerto Rico is uh sunshine every day and it's hot every day. And I remember it was 12 o'clock noon and I was under a blanket shaking like a leaf. I was going through a uh, shock mind, you know? Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I don't know what to say, stress. I was under a pressure big time. I was shaking. I was shaking. Remember, under a blanket, cold. I mean, my brain was, I mean, lucky that I don't shut down or whatever. I know my ex-wife was with me and she was calm down, calm down, and she tried to, I mean, we are puppies. We're what, 20, 22, 23 years, something like that. I don't know. So uh, shaking with something that, that you don't want to leave through. And uh, after I come down, relax, you know, did my tryout, whatever, say what I have to say there. They sent me back home till the news says uh, he's free. So we are like a so bullshit. The, actually, the jury I heard came back with a verdict in less than an hour. I don't know the long time, to be honest. Don't have that knowledge uh, in my head. Because after I uh, left, the only thing I see uh, was the news on the, on the paper, El Bocero. And that's what I was following the case. I, I, I refused to come back to court to see nothing. I remember after I finished and the uh, prosecutor and the, his lawyer said, no more questions. The judge said to me that uh, if you want to stay, stay, if you want to go, go. So I left and I went straight to the bathroom. When I went to the, through the bathroom, they uh, have a recess right there. And they went, Jose with the lawyers, follow me to the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. Here come Jose and grab my arm and shake my hand. He grabbed me. Yeah, I know. I don't even straight my. He just grabbed me and say thank you. When he said thank you to me, I look at him. I say, "Do you know he have a kid?" Mm -hmm. In español, he he's he was a father. That's what I said to him. Do you know he have a kid? He was a father, and he just turned around and left the bathroom. The lawyer says hello. You know, thank you, thank you to me, and left too. Thank you, me for what? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm I'm not plan. I'm not part of the plan. If it was a plan, mm -hmm. I'm not part of the proof that they fucking have it. I don't know what you could call that. I'm not part of that shit. So by using yeah. the law, by using the law, using the, the the questions, using whatever they have, of course they're gonna have what they have. They, I mean, they, they're going to ha uh, uh, have the, uh, the question like he had. Uh, but telling you, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm still in shock, brother. I'm still in shock. I'm still. Uh, I try not it, to it, think about it any more no. than I need to. But I wanted to bring that up. I wanted to get your side of it. But that's happened. Nothing we can do about it. But yeah. Let me let me get you into another subject that I think the fans want to hear. You started another company down there against Carlos. Yes. You and well, Victor, Victor Quinones. Let's do something. Let's do a second part because I have to go. Oh, okay. What time is it now? Uh, quarter 20 to, to 12. And I have to be at really? 20 minutes. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, Thanks fly. I won't ask let's, you that. Let's, hey, let's get fans, you. We, yeah. yes. he, he, he's having to run because he has a yeah. has an appointment. He, he cannot yeah. miss it. 
So listen, I'm going to have you back. And I want you to tell the story of when uh, you had the IWA and I was booking for Carlos. And all of a sudden you said, get away from them. Come over here and let's see what we can do. It's a guys, it's an interesting story because by that time I have my Homer, I have a yellow Homer and here come to the, to the office and on the side here, uh, in the bus stop <clears throat> is Dutch waiting for jumping the bus to go like uh, three more blocks because it was so hot. Dutch was soaking wet and sweat. And when I hear I arrived and I stopped the bus right there, he just looked like, what the heck? When I put the window down, Dutch saw me. He just, he didn't even ask. He uh, opened the door, jumped yeah. inside the car and say, man, it's hot. You know? <laughs> and I say, well, let's talk about business. He say, yes, of course. And now let's keep it right there because the story is interesting. You know what, what we did and where we went to do, uh, to have a meeting about the coming <laughs> the next day. Carl say, Hey, what's a good meeting with Savio? I said, what do you mean? You know, but let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. It's a good story. IWA story, guys, is great. I mean, okay. we it's crazy. Crazy. We'll, we'll do this next week. Yes, sir. We we'll do it. We have part two. Okay. Gracias. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. God next bless week. you. Bye-bye. And my camera's not, and my mic's not in the way, right? No. And I've started recording now, so anyway. Hello, right, We uh, Savio has gone. He's gone to his appointment, and we had a little bit of time left on the podcast, so we thought we'd do a couple of bits of news and maybe a rebuttal at the end as well. But did, for now, did, yeah. Did you enjoy, Savio? Immensely. Uh, the As I was saying, when I was listening to the Brody bit, I've never heard Savio talk that long about it. I've never... I, I think of... Well, I've heard you talk about it with... Um, filmmaker sean last month uh, for quite a quite a long time but with savio being there as well and i've never heard any information on the trial ever so that was really mm. interesting i think that that's a well a special we, bit of we, footage when we get him back we'll go into that and it's it's interesting because mm. i have my own theory about it and and i think he'll he'll back me up on it but anyway, nobody knows it, but Invader was not deemed innocent. He was deemed not guilty, which is, but he never denied stabbing him. He never denied killing him, actually. The but self, self claimed, defense. Yeah, he, he claimed self defense, and the jury backed him up on it. It's crazy. I'd I'd love to I'd love to know more about the trial, but the way Savio said it, it was they they knew the verdicts before they called the first witness. Sure, they did. Yeah. But see, I sat back and thought that nah, they'll they'll find him guilty. But you know, there's a lot of other factors that that bled into that. So it it was it was it was a mess. It really was. Uh, we, uh, as as we say, uh, we didn't know how much time we had with Savio, so uh, he disappeared after like the hour and a half mark. So we've got a tiny bit of time left to get to a couple of new stories, and as I say, rebuttal at the end. Uh, first is you've already talked about this. You've said before uh, a lady wrestler called Lufisto, uh, Lufisto. Excuse me, I can't even pronounce her name. I've, I've never heard of her before. Uh, before this all came out this last week, uh, was complaining about the women's oh. locker room. Uh, look at my camera. Look at my camera. Following me, you love it, don't you? Oh, I love that. I go, <laughs> Whoa, you see, this is more entertaining than Lou Fisto complaining. You do realize oh, you're just, oh, you're just swaying is. back and forth, fans. This was a camera that this man right here, James, that he sent me, and we ended up actually using the phone camera for what months, 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 and months, and all of a sudden, one day. I don't even know what I'm doing. And James was kind of stimmied on how to get this thing to work because we spent like 20 minutes this morning, right? Easily. I think what, I, what I'm, my theory is, is that the little white wire that goes from the iPhone to the microphone is broken because these, these little things, they break so easily, these little adapters. So whatever, a wire's burnt out. Within made, it and, yeah. made in China. Exactly. exactly exactly okay yeah. but anyway i like to play with my phone i mean my little camera here but this is a camera that james sent me 
Yeah, it was so, like four hundred dollars. It's like the most honestly, it's the most expensive webcam. That's just a straight webcam that money can buy before you have to get. I won't bore you to death with it, Dutch. Before you get into the whole uh, DSLRs and mirror count, you see, I've done my research with all these little names. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then, right. So, just, just, just for you to know, right. So, my camera is obviously, you know, it's, it's a, a vlog camera. It's a video uh, digital camera that specialises in four K video. But just the wire to go from the camera to my computer cost about one hundred and thirty dollars. Just for the connection. Just for the wire, yeah. Mm. That's how expensive. I'm finally a, glad that I've spent some money and now you're using this camera. Yeah, well, that's above my pay grade. Mm. But anyway, <laughs> let's go back to your Lefisto. Lefisto. Yeah. I was going to say you question. need to talk. You need to talk to the person who pays you about that. <laughs> I will. All right, uh, yeah, so Lufisto, in brackets, I've written who? Uh, complaining about the women's locker room again. Uh, Agent Dustin Rhodes and Ruby Soho, who everyone has since come on to defend and say how lovely she is. Um, I can't even read through the actual tr- transcript because it just reads like, you, do you remember a couple of weeks ago I used the word fluvia? Yes. And it's just just spattering words out, and I just couldn't go and make head and tails. But she did tweet afterwards. Uh, saying it's cute how people blame booking for a bad women's division talent with too much power talent degenerating or denigrating excuse me each other talent trash talking potential employees so they never get in as soon as they you walk in you didn't see me almost kill myself no i actually did i was but that's how professional i am i could actually die here james and you couldn't even be a witness okay so go okay. ahead uh, so yeah, she, she's complaining about the agents, complaining about the women. Everyone's against her, and then uh, she goes on to blame Britt Baker and her crew for holding back the women's division. Had a one-hour phone call with current AEW talent, the women who actually addressed the problems. I did today with the ones sent home by Tony Khan. There was a meeting to shoot on Thunder Rosa that Khan attended before leaving. He reminded them that their segments were the lowest. When some girls arranged a meeting to talk about Baker's crew, one of them ran to Britt to let her know the girls that wanted to address the problem. Were the ones punished. Okay, we sort of get the idea there. So this Lufisto character, what do you uh, make of all this when you first read it? In retrospect, you like that word? Oh. In retrospect, my earlier uh, assumptions are probably wrong because I'm not there. And I'm not going to cast, here's another word, aspersions on anyone. But apparently this... Lufisto lady, girl, female. Apparently she's had uh I think her her history, uh, reputation precedes itself. And I think it followed her in into the AEW locker room. Uh I bet when they heard, this is what I'm assuming. Uh, through uh, my past experiences in locker rooms. And when they heard she was coming, I bet the the news spread, they watched her. She will start trouble. She's this. She's that. And for the girls that didn't know her, you know, they have nothing else to believe, but the veterans that are already there in the locker room are telling them. So whatever she has done or whatever reputation she has built, it it probably followed her or preceded her to that dressing room. And she was met with what she was met with. I mean, she was met with, I mean, pure animosity. And maybe girls who didn't even know her didn't like her just from what they've heard. So I, I think Tony Khan... He gave a speech, I think, I read, and he told the girls that their segments are the lowest rated segments on the show. Did he say that? Uh, well, this is what uh, Lufisto has claimed. Yes. Yeah, so let me just uh, So there was one hour meeting about Thunder Rosa that Khan attended before leaving, and reminded that the girls, that their segments were the lowest. And she wrote that, so there's she no... wrote that. So this is all from her. I mean, so, I, I mean, this is all just very one-sided. Apart from like MJF came out and said, not came out, but you know what I mean. Uh, uh, made public that his feelings that Ruby Soho was like the nicest person, and basically this Lufisto, and it's sort of hard to uh, uh, say otherwise, is just embittered 
and basically can't make it in the big league, so therefore is trying to burn bridges everywhere and bring people down with it. Well, that is a possibility. But if that was the case, if she had a reputation uh, so strong and, and bad, that's what it seems like, why did they even book her there? Well, exactly. Is she, exactly. Is she yeah. in Canada? Uh, let me have a look. Well, her surname is Gen- well Genevieve Goulet. So I imagine she's, yes, yeah, she is French Canadian. French Canadian. So th- that kind of brought up the French Canadians are assholes, right? <laughs> Apparently, yep. uh, in the first tweet, the one you called effing French Canadian expletive. Yeah. So, well, again, uh, let me say, I, I think that uh, she has pissed off somebody in the past. It got to the dressing room before she got there. And she wasn't treated with respect. And basically, I don't think she'll be back. And I hate that. <clears throat> but I've seen it before. Maybe not to this extent. But I've, I've seen dress rooms not be accepting of a person that they don't like. And they don't have to. That's chemistry. Mm-hmm. So when your chemistry, if I was Tony Khan, and my chemistry told me, or I was told that the girl wasn't accepted, and she is like, uh, she's trouble. I wouldn't book her again. No matter the reason. Well, it could have been a legitimate reason, but I, w- I wouldn't book her. Well, yeah, well I was going to mention this as well, is that Tony Khan hires everybody. So if Tony Khan won't hire Lufisto. Did he hire you? Uh, he, I turned him down. And uh, for the women's division, he hired me for as well. And I said, no, I'm busy. And uh, I mean, I'm looking at her now. Uh, she's 43. She was only brought in for one shot, it seems like. And then uh, the, where I was going, going to beforehand that I didn't read the transcripts is that Dustin Rhodes, the agent for her match, was basically saying, you know, you're not brought in here to be a star. You're brought in here to, you know, sell. She was in like some eight-woman tag match, I think. And she took umbrage with her role that she was hired for that day as well. Uh, umbrage. Umbridge. Oh, I like that word. Well, I think she was brought in. I think this is what I heard because she's Canadian and I think they wanted her to help kind of run some Canadian, Canadian uh, towns or help out with it or something. She came there saying she wanted to meet Tony and she left that night without meeting Tony Khan. So whatever she was there for, it didn't happen. So and I don't know you, Miss Lufisto, but uh, I hope you find happiness in another uh, in another uh, field somewhere. Mm. So that is what it is. We'll move on now. And you wanted to make mention of this because I sent this to you. It's actually a few years old now, but I'd only just seen it. And it is the GCW Invisible Man match. And you watched it, oh. and uh, I kind of liked it. I have to admit. <laughs> Because they did a, a really, for what I watched, let me give you the, what it is, folks. It's the Invisible Man, which I booked before, by the way. Well, I was going to say, this is not this is an old thing, isn't it, in wrestling? Oh, yeah, If you really want to kill the town. Didn't you say that Ronnie Garvin did the Invisible Ronnie Man? Ronnie Garvin, he went to this show one time and didn't think he was going to get paid. And Ronnie told me this. He ran out to the ring, rang the bell, ding, 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 ding. And did the announcing himself, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and he announced himself and facing on his way to the ring right now, however he did it, uh, his weight is indeterminate or whatever, the invisible man. And he put it down and then, and he, he wrestled or pretended to wrestle the invisible man and uh, he beat him. And they got out and rung the bell, ding, ding, ding. And the winner is Ronnie Garvin. So he did that. So the promoter said, well, you didn't wrestle, you know, but he did wrestle. So my question to Ronnie, did you get paid? He said, yeah, I got paid. I said, what about the other guys? He said, well, I didn't do it for them. I did it for myself, I guess. But he told me that story. Plus, I had seen The Invisible Man. I'm a big fan of The Invisible Man. He was on, and uh, Sabio was talking about this today, Titani's Del Ring. Mm-hmm. 
that's where I first saw the invisible man. I was like astonished. I was like this, what the hell? But, and it's been an old joke in wrestling for years, wrestling the invisible man. And they had an invisible man on that show. So, so when you showed me this tape of G, what is it? GCW? Yeah, it's like Game Changer Wrestling. I think they do quite a lot of Game Changer Wrestling. Stuff, yeah. And they have their little studio or their little arena. It's packed in. They got to have two, three hundred people there anyway. And they were loud. And it was almost like the fans were coached to do this. And you could probably have a few of them you could put out there as starters. But they did a good job with it. It's so, just, it's, I think in, in wrestling, where you put a few people in the crowd, because, you know, like if you're filming a sitcom or something, like yep. a, an in-studio sitcom, you've got a few like plants in the audience to laugh at the right places. Have you ever known that to happen in wrestling, where they've been plants in the audience to cheer at the right place and sort of like try and uh, get the crowd going in the right direction? Well, I think I've seen some plants, but they went in the opposite direction. No. <laughs> they sit there like this sometimes. That's not good. We hate you. You need to leave. But no, most of the companies I work with are too cheap to hire anybody like that. You know, half their talent sometimes works for nothing. Some of the referees. But, you know, we say how low rent that is. But if you were a comedian wanting to be a, a big star comedian, you go, you'll work clubs. You won't get a dime for it, but you're testing out your material. So I figure it's the same way with wrestling. You know, you don't, you, you don't work in front of a lot of people. You don't make any money, but you do it to get experience and promoters know that, excuse me, <coughs> folks. I've been sicker than a dog the last couple of weeks. Called a summer cold, still not over it. But uh, going back to my wrestling analogy, people work for nothing and they will drive. I've known guys to drive six hours, four of them, to be in a tag match against each other and they drive back. They just pitch in for the gas, but they get the experience and you're only going to be young young once so take advantage of it before you get to wwe or aew you got to kind of know what's going on and you got to get your feet wet somewhere so that's the way guys do it so are we going to see this uh invisible man clip you no, have no no i think it's a bit too new uh, for us to use. Uh, I've got some clips for the next oh. episode on Tuesday. I'm sorry. So, <coughs> also, it's the Invisible Man. What's there to see? But I'll tell oh, you yeah, what, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link. I'll tell put a link on for people. But, tell them where it is, where they can find this. Uh, just Google GCW Invisible Man. You'll be able to find it. I'll put a link on the video if I remember. Um, but, you you got to watch this, yeah. folks. It's, I'm going to get them a lot of views yeah, here. You, so. you, said, you said it was, or did you say that it was the best Invisible Man match you'd ever seen? Uh, yes. Uh, he's really improved. He, <laughs> he really has. And he's work. The Invisible Man is actually working against his brother, called Invisible Stan. I'm just telling you. Mm. So that gives you a little background on it. So when you tune in, you've already been briefed on the background of it. So, and it's about five minutes long. But it's I, I'm amazed by how the crowd reacted to it. And uh, that's that's a tr that's a trained crowd. And we'll finish on this. I don't know what you're going to say. Uh, you wanted to make mention, because apparently Ahmed Johnson did an interview recently and said something about you or denied <laughs> something about you. So yes, how about it? Well, I was in WWF uh, managing Bradshaw. I may have been imagine, uh, managing the twins, Ronnie Don Harris. I don't know exactly when, but they brought in Ahmed Johnson. And Ahmed Johnson was terrible then, but he had what Vince liked. He had that massive body, and he looked good. He looked very believable. But when he stepped into a wrestling ring, he just lost all credibility. Because now he had to work under wrestling rules, and he didn't know how to do that. So Vince did. 
and this is what Ahmed Johnson says. And he got mad because I said that Vince told me to go and talk to him and help train him. Maybe not train him in a sense of actually getting in the ring with, but talk to him and tell him what to do or what not to do or how to present himself. Ahmed Johnson got on a, uh, some podcast lately and says, does me a deal. He can teach me a goddamn thing. Well, he's right. I didn't teach him a goddamn thing because he didn't go nowhere except to the unemployment line. Sometimes when somebody is willing to take time out of their schedule, not that I, I had a lot of stuff going on then, but if you're not going to listen and if you're not going to uh, use what a veteran is going to tell you, then don't knock the veteran later on for you not learning. Bl uh, blame yourself. So I don't know what Ahmed is doing now, but I'll tell you this. He's not working for any wrestling company and he's not making any money wrestling, but she could have, if he'd have been just a little bit smarter. With that being said, what, what specifically did you at least try and teach him? I mean, was it like stuff in the ring or was it timing or what did you actually try well, and teach him? Basically presentation and timing. And you can kind of teach that out of the ring, but and I don't think he was, he, he was there a little bit longer. And Vince asked me one day on an update on him. He said, how's he doing? I went, well, he's a, that's a tough nut there, Vince, to crack. And he says, tell me about it, pal. He wanted him to get better, but it's not up to Vince to train him. I mean, he needed to bring something to the table. And he did bring the huge body, which Vince liked, but that was all he brought. So actually, when he got in the ring to have a match, he actually did he actually did more harm than good. And I don't think it, uh, he was a baby face too, and he'd have been a much better used as a heel because he had that heel he, he had that heel personality anyway. But in any case, it didn't work, and we're talking about him today because of it. Yep. And also, uh, I'm surprised you can understand what he said because he's. Uh, have you ever seen? Uh, there's something called Fun with Ahmed on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen this, and it tries to translate, but it's like jokingly translates what Ahmed, Ahmed is saying because, like, every third word will just be complete nonsense, and it'll be <laughs> instead of like. I, I can't even give you an example, but it's something like, blah, 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 blah. and then they'll, and then like there's a subtitle that will try and make sense of it, but it, it's something like juice makes orange or something like uh, that. And it just puts random words that sounds like what that said. is. That is terrible. And you found humor in this, James. Great humor. Okay. Can we tell the people where they can find that too? Yeah. Search fun with Ahmed. It's on YouTube. Anyway, okay. uh, we're about to wrap this podcast up now. We're going to record our Tuesday episode, which is your fan questions. If you want your fan questions answered, questions for Dutch at gmail.com. We've got books. We've got T-shirts. We've got blah, blah, blah. You know how it goes. But thank you very much, uh, Savio, who can't hear me anymore. He's long gone. And Dutch, of course, for entertaining us. We the people. We the people. See you next week.